Okay, our next story involves another machine that can act as an extra eye for humans, but this one runs entirely on its own, and it does so underwater. It's called the Subjugator, and it's the latest gadget developed by a group of engineering students at the University of Florida and may one day replace divers in dangerous deep water scenarios. Well, there are other labs that are building bigger and better robots, but this, we do the best in the world. Engineers with attitude. This is the most complicated robot we've ever built. Most expensive robot we've ever built, too. Professor Eric Schwartz has earned his bragging right. Let me start over in this little corner here. His team of engineers at the University of Florida won first prize at an international competition for this robot. It's called the Subjugator. It's a mini sub that can move and find its way totally on its own. We build autonomous mobile agents. Things that move intelligently, you, you make, find a sensor to sense something about the environment and react to it. This isn't the first subjugator. Four others have come before it. Some of them stand about six feet tall and weigh in the 100-pound range. And to me, I would rather carry around a 30-pound unit. Because it's small, it can get where the big ones can't. But fitting all of its electronics into a small space gave these engineers a bit of a headache. Well, a part of the problem was um, stuffing all of the electronics into a space that was 6 inches in diameter and 14 inches long. Basically, you're stuffing in 14 microcontroller boards, a PC, four battery packs, two cameras, and then also having enough space to mount external units such as the underwater microphones. Let's go before. Since the submarine can see, hear, and move in different directions all on its own, this amount of electronic equipment is necessary to pre-program. But testing is all in the pool. These engineers spend as much time here as in the lab. They test what it can do with an underwater obstacle course. <laughs> Stage one is to see if the sub's cameras or eyes can recognize this pipeline. It has three on board. Looking at the front here, you can see the front, uh, the main camera that uh, looks forward and it's a very small CCD camera. It's actually the same insides of uh, one of the Logitech webcams that you might buy it at Best Buy. It's not only important for this sub to locate objects like a pipeline, it needs to know colors. Today it's looking for the color orange. Its cameras feed the surroundings back to its computer or brain. This is the live image camera and this is the segmented image camera and our algorithms segment out everything but orange. This is our segmented out image with only Carlo's shirt, which is orange, which matches the color of the pipeline. The next obstacle is sound. Once the pipeline ends, the submarine stops moving and must listen for an audio cue. It uses three hydrophones. The hydrophones are, are arranged in a, in, a, in a triangle. So basically you have one hydrophone up front and two in the back. Based on this arrangement, we can figure out exactly where some sound comes from. The sound source is an, is an acoustic pinger, which basically generates, I got one right over here, which generates a uh, very short burst of sound at uh, 27 kilohertz. When the sub locates the pinger, it must hover over it, surface, and submerge again. Task completed. The next step is searching for a pink triangle. When the sub finds it, it must surface again. This obstacle course may look simple, but these students spend hours in the pool trying to achieve a perfect run. When things don't go smoothly, they regroup in the lab. I agree with Jim. It, it would be really hard to apply. Running the subjugator through these tests is not all fun and games. One of the reasons it's important to have um, devices such as this is, well, for instance, let's say Exxon has um, a brick in their pipe, one of their offshore drilling rigs. What they could do is send down an autonomous underwater vehicle and it could inspect the pipeline. If it finds a break, it could mark the break, and then it could surface in the recovery zone. It could also save lives. This just keeps divers out of the water, which is, if, if at all possible, you'd like to keep people out of dangerous places. For now, it's good to win competitions. And this team, with their most recent win, is the champ on the block. That is, until next year. I'm happy. Good investment, huh? <laughs>